Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Attitudes just make all the difference in the world. One little cute story. She's 92 years old, petite, well poised and proud. She's fully dressed each morning by 8 o'clock with her hair fashionably styled. Her makeup perfectly applied in spite of the fact that she's legally blind. Today she's moved to a nursing home because her husband of 70 years has recently passed away, making the move necessary. After many hours of waiting patiently in the lobby of the nursing home, where I am employed. The lady smiled sweetly when told that her room was finally ready. As she maneuvered her walker to the elevator, I provided a visual description of her tiny little room that she would now live in the rest of her life. I told her about the eyelet curtains that had been hung on her windows. I love it, she said. She, she stated that with the enthusiasm of an eight-year-old having been presented with a new puppy. Mrs. Jones, you haven't even seen the room yet. Just wait. Then she spoke these words that I will never forget. That doesn't have anything to do with it, she gently replied. Happiness is something you decide on ahead of time. Whether I like the room or not does not depend on how the furniture is arranged. It is how I have arranged my mind. I have already decided to love it. Think about that. She said, I have already decided to love it. It's a decision I make every morning when I wake up. I have a choice. I can spend the day in bed recounting the difficulties I've had with all the parts of my body that no longer work. Or I can get out of bed and be thankful for the ones that do work. Each day is a gift, and as long as my eyes open, I will focus on the new day and all the happy memories I have stored away just for this time in my life. Come on, give God a big praise. You know, when people come to my conferences, I really like to have people think about making some kind of a decision. Because you see, nothing good happens in our life accidentally. <laughs> We have to make decisions. And I think that every time you hear a really good sermon preached under the anointing, it should leave you with some kind of a decision to make that will help you come up higher. Amen? And so this is good tonight because we can make a decision that we're just not going to be unhappy. <laughs> we can just make a decision. I am not letting the devil steal one more day of my joy. I am not going to let him keep... I'm not going to keep living uptight, all tense, and having to have therapy all the time to get the knots out of my neck. <laughs> Been there, done that. Amen. Because life is not going to change. Now, see, you don't clap when I say that. <laughs> But that's all right. I get it. But honestly and truly, There's always going to be circumstances and situations that we don't like, and there's always going to be people out there that irritate us. If it's not one, it'll be another. So we have to make a decision. The decision we make tonight is I'm going to change. I'm going to change my approach and my attitude, and I'm going to learn to handle people and situations the way that Jesus handled them. Amen. Now, Simple faith in God is really the answer to all this. And I say simple faith because really you just might as well forget ever figuring God out. Simple faith means I believe for no reason other than I believe. I believe because I've decided to believe. To be honest, if I wasn't a believer, I couldn't see any reason at all to get up and face one more day of my life if I did not have the ability to put my trust in God. I've already found out that you can't trust all people. I've already found out my circumstances aren't going to make me happy. I, there's nothing I can own or buy that's going to make me happy. But simple, childlike faith in God, I believe. 
I don't believe it because I've seen it. I don't believe it because I feel it. I just believe it because I do. It's in my heart. I know that Jesus died for me. I know that he loves me. I know he's always watching over me. These are the kind of things that we need to remind ourselves of all the time. Keep that simple, childlike faith, and you'll get rid of a lot of the uptight stuff. Maintain an easy-going attitude. Now, let's talk about the anointing of ease. First of all, let me say that Satan cannot control you as long as you don't lose control. That's one of those things you should write down and put it on your Facebook later, not, after, not during this meeting. <laughs> Joyce said, <laughs> or you can even just say you said it if you want to, I don't know. <laughs> Satan cannot control you if you don't lose control. I like to say that he sets us up to get us upset. Amen? So let's look at two scriptures. Psalm 94, 12, and 13. It's so important to be able to stay calm. Just to stay relaxed and have an easygoing attitude and don't get all uptight, no matter what your circumstances are. You say, well, I can't help it. I just lose my temper. Well, it doesn't have to be that way if you study the Word of God and you begin to pray about this and you begin to have a different approach. How many of you that have been very, very uptight in your life can say, maybe you're not where you want to be, but you've certainly come a long way from where you used to be? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Hallelujah. And Dave is probably happier than I am. <laughs> he said, I remember when I used to drive down the highway at night on the way home from work thinking, I wonder what she'll be like tonight. You know, it's no fun to live with somebody that's uptight and tense and stressed out all the time. Psalm 94, 12, and 13. Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied is the man whom you discipline and instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law, that you may give him power to keep himself calm. <laughs> that you may give him power to keep himself calm. You know, I almost enjoy it now when the enemy tries to push my buttons and get me to act ugly, and I can call on the power of God and just say, been there, done that, ran around that mountain a thousand times, not going there again, I'm staying calm. It's almost like a fun game to play. That you may give him the power to keep himself calm in the days of adversity. See, we wait for our circumstances to keep us calm. Or for other people to behave in a way where we can stay calm. But this says that we are going to continue to have things happen in our life until we learn to keep ourselves calm. <laughs> Every trial that you have is an opportunity to practice. to keep himself calm in the days of adversity until the inevitable pit of corruption is dug for the wicked. John 14, verse 1. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. <laughs> Distressed, agitated, uptight. That's the amplified, amplified version. You believe and adhere to and trust and rely on God. Believe and adhere to and trust and rely on me. So what is he saying the answer is to all this uptight stuff? Trust God. Just trust God. <laughs> well, what is God going to do? I don't know. But he's pretty smart. He knows everything. He's everywhere all the time. He has all power. <laughs> Before you ever got to where you're at, God already knew you were going to get here. He's not surprised by your situation or my situation. Just stay calm. In the world, you will have tribulation. Jesus said, cheer up. I have overcome the world. 
in the world, you will have tribulation. Cheer up, I have overcome the world. Now, you know, all of life is not just one trouble after another. We have lots of great days and days that are just amazing. Matter of fact, if I look at my life, I'd have to say my, my whole life is amazing. But yet, just, is, just as a, a thing to do to prove a point, I kept a record for about six weeks starting in like February or March of this year in the back of my journal of troublesome, irritating things that happened to me that could have really upset me and put me over the edge and ruined my day had I not decided, everybody say, I decided, decided. to stay calm and trust God. Trust in God is an amazing, amazing privilege. And that's your privilege as a believer in Jesus Christ. You get to trust God in every situation. You don't have to trust God. You don't even have to try to trust God. You have the privilege of trusting God. You can believe when you don't know what to do that God knows and he's got it covered. <laughs> Hallelujah. John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you. <laughs> My own peace I now give and bequeath unto you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. We don't have the kind of peace the world has that is based on circumstances. We have a different quality of peace. We have the peace of God, the peace that passes understanding. Not as the world gives do I give unto you. Do not, now watch this last part. Amplified translation, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and uptight. And do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. Let's back it up. I want you to see it again. Come on, God's given us a responsibility. Stop allowing yourselves. See, we just kind of, well, I want this to go away. I just want this to go away. I don't want to feel this way. Well, then stop it. <laughs> if you don't want to sit around and feel sorry for yourself all day, then go out and do something. Get yourself off your mind. Go be a blessing to somebody else. Don't waste another day just sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. If you're upset because you got two or three areas in your body that hurt or don't work right anymore, think about all the things that do work right and good. Fight the devil. Fight the good fight of faith. You can fight the devil and win every time if you just keep a good attitude. The devil cannot defeat you if you will keep a good attitude. Amen? Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed. And do not permit yourselves. <laughs> and you know, the best way to stop yourself from getting really upset is when you first start to feel upset. 1 Peter chapter 5 says, resist the devil at his onset. And that's always been a very important scripture to me because how many of you know that sometimes if you get mad enough, then there's no turning back? <laughs> but if you'll do something about it when you first start feeling that way, it's much easier to stop it then. So when you first start feeling that uptight. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Don't I do that good? <laughs> you know what? You, you can stop right then and go, God's in control. He loves me. This wasn't my plan. Man's mind plans his way, but God directs his steps. Staying happy, been around the unhappy mountain, not taking another trip around that mountain. <laughs> Forget it, devil, you're not gonna control me. Go have a little chat with yourself. I tell people pretty often, go have, an, um, go have a meeting with yourself. Now, when we talk about an anointing of ease, I love that thought. An anointing of ease, a holy, ease that we can have in our life. Not a lazy ease, 
Not laying around on the couch, watching soap operas and eating donuts all day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about everything being easy. I'm talking about a holy ease. Let's look at a couple of scriptures. Psalm 119, 45. We're just going to put these up real quick and let you see them. And I will walk at liberty and at ease. For I have sought and inquired far and desperately required your precepts. Now, before we take that away, let's look at why the psalmist was saying that he could walk in liberty and at ease. Because he was seeking God and God's way of living and being and doing. Psalm 25, verse 13. He himself shall dwell at ease, and his offspring shall inherit the land. Turn to the person next to you and say, lighten up, will you? <laughs> Quit being so intense. Amen? Now, Let's talk about a little ease for our souls. Now, remember, your soul is your mind, your will, and your, and your, your mind, your will, your emotions. And your soul is this inner part of you. My soul is my inner part. And really, that's, that's where our joy is at. It's not, you know, you can be happy if everything that's happening suits you. But then when it's not suiting you, you become unhappy. But you know, we have the joy of the Lord, but there's no such, we never use the phrase, I have become unjoyed. <laughs> you know, you, you can be happy and unhappy, but you're not joyed and unjoyed. Because the joy of the Lord is something that we can have all the time because it's not ever based on what's happening. It's based on what we know and what we believe. Come on. It's based on what we believe. My joy is based on what I believe. My happiness is based on what's happening. Come on now. My happiness is based on what's happening, but my joy is based on what I believe. That's another good one to send off to your friends. So let's talk for a minute about getting some mental ease. <laughs> How many of you have got a brain that could use a break? All right. Let's talk for a minute about not reasoning. You know, I was, oh my gosh, I was addicted to reasoning. Lord have mercy. I think I lived in so much fear in my childhood and just really didn't have anybody to properly take care of me that I just felt that I had to have everything figured out, not only in my life, but everybody else's life. And I want to tell you what, it, it's, it is a full-time job trying to run the world. I mean, it just, it will just absolutely wear you out. I not only was concerned about my stuff, I was concerned about everybody else's too. And I did a lot of reasoning. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 7, trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind, your heart and mind. We say, well, I'm trusting God. Well, what are you doing with your mind? Trust the Lord with all your heart and mind and lean not or rely not on your own insight or understanding. And I love this next one. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. It's just this simple. God, I have a really stinky situation here. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm asking you to give me insight. You show me what I should do in this situation. And until you do, I'm going to stay and rest. There's no shame or no embarrassment in saying, I don't know what to do. I do not know what to do. Everybody's always asking us, well, what are you going to do? 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 <laughs> I honestly think that, that the devil sends out a little demon every morning to sit on each one of our shoulders, screaming in our ear all day, well, what are you going to do? 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 <laughs> you even try to rest and the enemy's going to say, you need to do something. You need to do something. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
Well, has anybody ever noticed that we're not called human doings? <laughs> I actually thought, I wonder if that'd make a good book. Are you a human being or a human doing? Because we don't know how to just be and let God be God. In Ephesians 6, the Bible says, do all that the crisis demands and then stand firmly in your place. Well, yes, if you know what to do, by all means, do it. But if you don't, stand firm abiding in Christ, knowing that he will not let you down. He might not show up early, but he won't be late. How many of you have found out that even though God doesn't always do everything you want him to, he does always come through? I mean, it's the truth. Even though he doesn't do everything I want him to do, he does come through for me. It is a great privilege to be able to trust God. We don't, I'm trying to trust God. Well, I guess I'll just have to trust God. No, it's a privilege to trust God. And don't do that after you've done everything else. Do that first. <laughs> In every situation, say, I'm not, I'm not going to get bothered about that. I'm going to trust God. And then voice that trust. Release your faith through praying or saying or taking action. It was such a relief to me when I finally was delivered from having to figure everything out, from having to know everything. And see, the problem is, is a lot of times you think you got something figured out. At least this is what I found. Oh, I thought I had it in the slot. Boy, this is what's going to happen. And then that wouldn't be what happened at all. And so really, God just finally got across to me, you think you know so much and you don't know. You don't know. You're not as smart as you think you are. We don't have to know as long as we know the one who does know. <clears throat> really, walking in faith very often requires trusting God one day at a time. And that's kind of a scary thing. The example that we find in the Old Testament is very relevant to us today in every situation of our life where they had no food, they had no way of providing food, and God miraculously provided food called manna, which fell from heaven every morning, and they were commanded that they could only gather enough for one day. If they got more than for one day, it would rot, rot and stink. And so maybe I could just take a little scriptural license here for a minute and say, as long as you try to gather more grace and more answers than what you need for today, your life is going to be rotten and it's going to stink. <laughs> Amen? It's enough to just know that today my needs are met. And you know, even if we think we've got everything secure for the future, we don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you could feel so financially secure, you could have a gazillion dollars in the bank, and we all know that that could all cave in overnight. That's why the Bible says don't put your trust in money and things and the world and government. We need to put our trust in God, in God. In God alone, I place my trust. Excessive thinking can drive you absolutely mad. <laughs> well, you know, I'm just a big thinker. <laughs> yes, I'm just a deep thinker. Well, if you're like I was, you've gotten so deep you don't even know where you're at anymore. <laughs> Let your soul have a vacation. Let's talk about another area of the mind real quick. How about not being double-minded anymore? How about making a decision and sticking with it? <laughs> well, I think I'll do this. Well, no, maybe I'll do that. Well, no, I, maybe I should go back to this. Well, no, I don't, I don't think I'll do this. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll do this. Well, I'm afraid to make any decision because I'm afraid I'll make the wrong decision. And then we call up everybody we know. What do you think I should do? What do you think I should do? They don't even know what they're doing. They're not qualified to tell you what to do. <laughs> if you want to know what to do, get with God and get some real wisdom. Yes, thank you, Jesus. 
make decisions. Don't be so insecure that you can't make a decision. You know, if you make a decision and you're wrong, you'll survive. You'll just be wrong. <laughs> and it won't kill you. You'll just learn from your mistake. And then you'll be better equipped the next time to make a decision. Isn't that brilliant? Well, our happiness is often based on what's happening in our lives. But our joy can be based on what we believe. And we can choose which one we want to live by.